Let's take a look at examples of finding roots of complex numbers in polar form. Here I have the uh, complex number 2 times the cosine of pi over 4 plus i times the sine of pi over 4, and I want the square roots of that. So what we're going to do first is realize that this complex number has many representations. Let's call this complex number z. So z, of course, equals 2 times the cosine of pi over 4 plus i times the sine of pi over 4. But it also equals 2 times the cosine of 9 pi over 4 plus i times the sine of 9 pi over 4. That's because pi over 4 and 9 pi over 4 are coterminal. They are separated by an angle of 2 pi, which means they land in the same spot on the unit circle. So, of course, these two complex numbers land at the same spot as well because they have the same modulus and their arguments are coterminal. And let's do one more. So let's call this Z1. That's one way to represent Z. Here's another way to represent Z. Here's the third way to represent Z. Z. If I add 2 pi to 9 pi over 4, then I get 17 pi over 4, which is also coterminal with those two angles. Okay? So these have coterminal arguments. And of course, I could, I could continue with different versions of z. Okay? But let's see what happens when I go to do the square roots. So in other words, if I raise z sub 1 to the 1 half power, since I want square roots, then I'm going to get 2 to the 1 half power times the cosine of pi over 4 divided by the root, which is 2, plus i times the sine of pi over 4 divided by the root 2. So z sub 1 to the 1 half power, the first square root of z is the square root of 2 times the cosine of pi over 8 plus i times the sine of pi over 8. So this is a square root of z. In other words, if you were to, to square this, you would get z back, and you could try that. Okay, if I take the square root of z sub 2, then I get similarly, you can imagine I'll get square root of 2 again, times the cosine of, I'm going to divide 9 pi over 4 by 2, just like I did with pi over 4 over here. So I'll get cosine of 9 pi over 8 plus i times the sine of 9 pi over 8. Now here's what's interesting. The angles up here, the angles for the different versions of the original number z were all coterminal, remember? However, now we have these new angles or new arguments, pi over 8 and 9 pi over 8. Those are not coterminal. So these actually give us, these are not coterminal arguments. So that means that we have another different square root of z. These are two different square roots. Let's do the same thing with the third one here, z sub 3 to the 1 half. I'm just running out of room here. I'll have square root of 2 times cosine of 17 pi over 8 plus i times the sine of 17 pi over 8. Now we have to think, is 17 pi over 8 coterminal with either of these? And in fact, 17 pi over 8 is the same thing as 2 and 1 eighth pi. So it's got to be coterminal with 1 eighth pi. So this now repeats 
the square roots of z sub 1. Because now this angle is the same as this angle. So we have a diff this is the same number then as the square root of z sub 1. So in fact, there are two there are two square roots of the complex number z which happen to equal 2 times the cosine of pi over 4 plus i times the sine of pi over 4. So if you were to go back and square this square root or this square root, if you square either one of those, then you'll get this complex number back, okay? And there are two of them. In fact, um, we can start to see if we did some more work. Let me erase all of this, or let me just scroll down. If I had the cube roots of z equals 2 times the cosine of pi over 4 plus i times the sine of pi over 4. If you check it, there are three. And if you generalize this concept, you'll see that there are n nth roots. So if you're doing fifth roots, you can expect to have five answers. If you're doing tenth roots, you can expect to have ten answers. Okay? So if we were to do the cube roots here, I know that I'm going to have three answers. So I'm going to first write three different ways, three different representations of z. Okay? So z, z sub 1 is going to be the one that we have. z sub 2 is going to be the next angle that's coterminal with pi over 4, which as we saw before was 9 pi over 4. And z sub 3 will be the next angle that's coterminal with pi over 4, which is 17 pi over 4. And I could, of course, go on to get more coterminal angles, but I know that I'm only going to have three answers, so these will give me my three different answers. So the first cube root that I get, if I raise this to the one-third power, then two to the one-third power will be the cube root of two, and then I'll divide my argument by three to give me cosine of pi over 12 plus i times the sine of pi over 12, and that's our first cube root. Then if I take the cube root of the second representation, I'll get the cube root of 2 times the cosine of 9 pi over 12 plus i times the sine of 9 pi over 12. Which, of course, 9 pi over 12 reduces, so you could reduce that if you like. And last but not least, our third cube root would be the cube root of 2 times the cosine of 17 pi over 12 plus i times the sine of 17 pi over 12. And those are our three cube roots. If you went ahead and looked at z sub 4, then you'll just end up repeating this guy, the very first one, because the angle you'll get in z sub 4 will be coterminal with pi over 12. Well, that's how you find roots of complex numbers in polar form. It ends up being very simple. The most interesting part, again, I'll remind you, is that the, the different versions of the original complex number, they're all literally equal because the arguments are coterminal, but then the roots are not equal because the arguments are not coterminal. So one complex number to begin with can give you multiple distinct roots. And as we saw, it can give you two, two distinct square roots, three distinct cube roots, four distinct, four distinct fourth roots, etc. Very interesting stuff. I hope it, I hope it makes sense.